for being with us today. I'm crossing over to the other side, dressed in your armor and your strength to fight a miracle power is within my reach, close enough for you to see a land of promise where your goodness Kia ora, morena, everyone. Wasn't that awesome? Thanks so much for Steve to, uh, to Steve for putting that together and thank you so much all our lounge churches. Uh, we're so proud and if that's the right word and humbled that um, we're realising that church is not just coming together in a big building um, on a Sunday, although that is so good. It's, it's coming together as community, being committed to community and um, so we're doing that all over uh, Whangarei, as, as Christy said. And I just want to say thank you so much for being committed to that. Thank you so much to the lounge church leaders and the hosts and the assistants and for everyone else who understands the importance of still meeting together in Jesus' name. Anyway, my name's Simon. It's my privilege to be able to share the Word of the Lord with you guys again. And we're starting a new series, maybe for the next three weeks, all about vision. And I think why this is so important during this time is and um, we've had like two plus years now of ups and downs and having to pivot of not quite knowing what's going on. So people are disillusioned and discouraged and distracted and depressed and other negative D words, uh, defeated <laughs> um, during this time. And uh, we, as, as a result, I really do believe a lot of us have lost our God vision and we need to get that back. We need to, to rediscover uh, God's vision for our lives because what God has for your life is so, so powerful. And um, it sort of come out of when I was reading the other day of Jesus when he, he was progressively healing a guy that was blind. So he prays for him the first time and he says, can you see anything? And the guy says, I, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. And every time I read that, I think of the Lord of the Rings with the ants, you know, tree beard walking around <laughs> uh, for some ridiculous reason. But so he, he had vision, but it wasn't clear. And then Jesus prayed for him again and, and restored his sight completely. And I really do think maybe that's a picture of us as God's sons and daughters at the moment. And we've given our lives to God. We, we've submitted to His Lordship in our life and He's given us um, partial vision, but we still don't see things as clearly as we could. We, we sort of know God's purpose for our life, but not quite. And that was um, shown uh, a couple of weeks ago when I talked about Chris Hodges' statistic about how he reckons 87% of, of Christians actually don't really know where they fit in the body of Christ. So it's true, a lot of us have partial vision, but not full vision. We don't fully understand God's vision for our life. And I think that's important. We can absolutely discover that. So that's what this series is all about. And the absolute classic go-to verse for, for vision is um, Proverbs 29, 18. And the old school version of this is where there is no vision, the people perish. And I love the English Standard Version of that. It says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Where there is no prophetic vision, which means where there is no vision from God, where there is no God vision, as opposed to just a normal vision. You know, we can have a lot of vision in our life, like Vision, for example, is, and I want to lose 10 kg this year. You know, that's, that's sort of a good vision, but it's not necessarily a God vision. So where there is no vision from God, when we don't discover God's vision for our life, people cast off restraint. And, and other translations say, if, if you lose God's vision for your life, you will act recklessly. You will wander aimlessly. 
and, and perish. And a few of us uh, guys were meeting together on Sunday nights. We have got a bit of a connect group and we're reading through Exodus at the moment. And time and time again, every time the Israelites, they had been rescued, they had been delivered out of slavery, but every time they came up against a challenge or a hard time, uh, they wanted to go back to Egypt. They complained, they murmured. And, and the reason for that is they hadn't really embraced God's vision for them. God's vision for them was, I've got this incredible land full of promise. I am going to give you. I'm not gonna drop you. I'm not gonna reject you. I'm not gonna leave you high and dry. I'm gonna be with you because this is my vision for you. But they just lost their vision. They were living with partial vision. Maybe they sort of believed it, but not really. So every time they faced a difficulty, they wanted to go back into slavery. And so that got me thinking, about without vision, people act recklessly. And I, I've really sort of come to, to believe that, you know, when, when we fall, when Kiwi slang is like when we have a shocker, uh, when, we, um, when, when we do things stupid, usually it's not just a sin issue. I think the fundamental problem is it's a vision issue. You know, we lose sight of God's vision for our life. Therefore, we do silly things. Therefore, we act Recklessly, we cast off restraint. So more than just a moral issue, it is obviously a moral issue. I think it's more fundamentally a vision issue. For example, if someone commits adultery, uh, obviously it's, it's a sin issue, but really why did they commit adultery in the first place? Because they've lost sight of, of their vision for marriage, uh, why they were married in the first place. So it's not just a sin issue, it's a vision issue. They've lost sight of the vision of marriage, uh, when someone takes their own life and that is so heartbreaking and devastating for everyone. They, they lose sight of hope. They've lost a vision of hope. They've lost a vision of their life and, and their life purpose. And this applies to every area of our, our life. When someone falls out of church or, or drops out of church, it's not just that they had verbal fisticuffs with Mavis during the, the tea and coffee time. No offence to if, if anyone who's name's Mavis this morning. Um, it, it goes deeper than that. People lose sight of the fact that church is God's plan A to see His plans and purposes fulfilled on planet Earth. And we get to play a part, an important part in that. So again, it's not just an offence offense issue. It's more of a vision issue. People lose sight of God's vision for their life. Therefore, they act recklessly. Therefore, they throw off all restraint. So Bringing this all together, I think having God vision is absolutely paramount for our lives as, as believers in Jesus. I think it's, it's right up there, you know, with obviously salvation is the most important, giving our lives to Jesus and having our sins washed away and knowing that our, our eternal future is secure in Him. And, and being filled with the Holy Spirit and having His power in our lives is so important. But I think having a God vision for our life is, is so important, is, is, is right up there actually. Because if we don't have a clear vision of what God has for our life, we will uh, act recklessly. And when we act recklessly, we hurt ourselves, we hurt others, we bring damage to people. But if we have a God vision, it'll keep us on the straight and narrow and we truly start to, to experience God's true life for us. So I think this, this, uh, this week and going on to next week, we're gonna be looking at how to discover God's vision, having a God vision for your life. And when I started writing this, um, I started talking about you know, developing God's vision for our life, but it's so much more than developing a vision. We don't develop God's vision. God has a vision for our life already. We just need to, to discover it. And, uh, and, and then we, do, we, we see things amazing uh, what He has for our lives. And for an example, for this a bit of a, uh, an analogy, say if you've got a lot of money and you wanna build your dream house and, and, you, and you spend time sort of dreaming what it's gonna be like, you know, you want the master bedroom over here and, and you want a, a, like a massive um, bathroom and you want you know, the, the rooms to be like this for, for whatever reason. So you come up with a plan, you draw it up and that's your dream plan. And then just for sake of simplicity, you go to, you take those plans to a builder and you employ a builder to build your dream home for you. And hopefully if he's a good, good builder, he will build that home according to the plans that you have given him. 
So just imagine if a builder took your plans and thought, yeah, well, that's great, but I think that the master bedroom will be better over here. And they don't need like a big bathroom. They just have a real small one. Then we can fit a, like a, a, an attic here and a wardrobe over here. And, and I'll do it my way. You know, that, that builder is probably gonna lose his job or uh, worst case scenario, get sued or uh, go on fair go or something. That's not what a builder does. A builder is employed by the owners to build according to the plan. Now, in that scenario, God is the planner. He plans our life. It says in Jeremiah that He's got incredible plans for your life. He knows what He's doing. They're amazing plans. And then He shows those plans for us and we discover God's plans. And then we build our lives according to the plan that God has for us because He knows better. He knows best. His ways are the best. But so often what we do is, you know, we give our life to Jesus and that's great. We're going to heaven now and and we have Jesus as our sort of insurance policy against hell. Uh, But we continue to build our life the way we want to build it. And then we wonder why we get into trouble and then we have heartbreak and then we have a whole lot of baggage and, uh, and, and a mess to clean up. God's got an incredible plan for all of our lives and it's not hard to discover that plan. We don't develop it, we discover it. Uh, Rick Warren, and I love Rick Warren. He's uh, an amazing pastor, a big church in the States and he's written Purpose Driven Life and A Purpose Driven Church and probably a whole lot of other books about being purpose driven. But he says this, and I love this quote, the purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you wanna know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by His purpose and for His purpose. God has plans for you and we need to build our lives according to those plans. So we speak a lot about purpose and having a purpose, discovering God's will, um, and that's important. But vision is actually seeing God's purpose for your life. See, the Israelites, they sort of knew a little bit, but they didn't have that in their hearts. It wasn't a a living vision in their lives that kept them on on the right path, even when uh, difficult times came. So that's why uh, vision is so important. So discovering God's vision for your life, what do we do? Number one, follow Jesus. Now, I know that's probably like, my number one point for almost every sermon I say, it's like it starts with following Jesus, but it absolutely does. It is so important to our lives to follow Jesus. In Mark 8 verses 34 to 35, it says, And calling the crowd to Him with His disciples, He said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. So Jesus was being pretty straight up here that we need to almost disown our life and give our life to Jesus. And when you read that and just boiling it down to one line, which I think is really important, which is this. If you let go of the Lordship of your life, And if you give that lordship or relinquish the lordship of your life over to Jesus, then you will discover true life. You will discover His vision for your life. But it's all about giving lordship of your life over to Him. I really do think that we can give our life to Jesus in a way and have our sins forgiven, but still hold that ownership of uh, our life to ourselves. And um, again, we wonder why we get into trouble but really following Jesus, being a true disciple of Jesus, it's giving lordship of your life over to Him. Then you will experience true life. Then you will discover God's vision for your life. Follow Jesus. It's that simple this morning as a bit of a challenge. Are you following Jesus? Have you given lordship of your life over to Jesus? Are you building your life according to His plan for you? Or are you building it according to your plan? So follow Jesus. Number two, turn aside to see. Exodus 3, verses two to four. So Moses was, he knew as a young man, uh, a sort of a bit of God's vision for his life that he was gonna be a deliverer. Unfortunately, he tried to build his life his own way and work it out, got into trouble, um, flees Egypt, ends up 
40 years being a shepherd in the desert. He's disillusioned, he's discouraged, he's lost sight of that God vision in his life. And then this this is what happens in verse two. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame, flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. So he's going and doing his shepherdy things. And then probably from a bit of a distance, he sees this burning bush and he stops what he's doing and he turns aside to see. And then it says in verse four, when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, then God called him out of the bush. Moses, Moses, he said, here I am. So Moses, very busy, um, he turns aside, he takes time out to see the Lord. And then when God sees that Moses has taken time out, then He calls Moses. And and our lives, even as believers, we can get so busy. Uh, the, The loudness of our life is just so, so strong. Um, are we still turning aside regularly to see God, to seek Him, to hear His voice? I really do think that God is speaking to us very, very frequently. The issue is with us. We just simply don't turn aside to seek Him. We don't listen for His voice. We aren't deliberate in that. But God's just waiting for us to do that. We follow Him and then we take time out. We put time aside during the day to seek Him and that's where because He sees that we're hungry for Him. He blesses us and He speaks to us. And put another way, uh, because I just love animals. Um, It doesn't matter what sort of animal, uh, like our our daughter's just got a blue tongue skink and I love that. Um, So so just animals, I'm an animal lover. Probably gonna have a million animals in heaven, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, But we were at some, some park one day and I was just looking at Pigeons and pigeons walk really weird. If you've noticed, they just do this real weird thing with their head and I'm not gonna sort of replicate it this morning because I'll look silly. But they're walking and their head just moves really weird. So being the geek that I am, I Googled (laughs) Googled that. It's like, why do pigeons walk so weird? Um, And there is a a scientific reason for that. A lot of birds, unless their, their head is completely still, they can't see clearly. They can't see Uh, depth perception. So as they are walking for the pigeon to really uh, see clearly, they've got to stop moving for a split second of time. So as they are walking in between the steps, there's always a a split second where their head is not moving. That's why to us it looks so weird, but to them, they do that so they see clearly. They can see depth perception. They don't just see blurry anymore, they see very, very clearly. In the middle of the steps, they stop and and they see clearly. And I think that's it's always been such an incredible encouragement and an incredible picture and analogy for us. During the walking of our lives, during the steps, in between the steps, we must stop and, and, and be deliberate about seeking the heart of God. And as we do that in that quiet place, then we get to see clearly again. So it's following God, but it's also turning aside to see Him. Else, even as believers, we can just carry on through life and and we barely have that time to to see clearly when we lose vision. So um, I'll probably continue the points next week, but the first two, follow Jesus. Number two, turn aside to see Him be deliberate with that. Now in conclusion this morning, uh, I really just wanna pray that that God would restore our vision uh, because it's really easy at times to lose that and to not see clearly. Uh, So I'm gonna be praying for that. I'm gonna pray also for us to really get back to the heart of worship again, which is the Lordship of Jesus in our lives. Well, I was reading this this morning, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18, and this is, uh, Paul, and he's talking about how he has, has got the, the courage to keep going on the mission that God has given him. And it says, so we don't look at the troubles we, see, we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. So he's not worried about what's 
what's happening right now. He's got this God vision and he's seeing clearly. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And this is echoed throughout Scripture. Even Jesus, before He went to the cross, it says uh, He went to the cross because of the joy that was set before Him. He had a God vision, which was His Father, and it was also us. Um, was it Paul that says, I run the race to win. I look at the prize. See, all of these people, they carried on. They persevered. They were able to keep going during the trials of life because they had a clear God vision. They, they followed God and they regularly turned aside to seek. So that story I said, uh, what happened with Jesus, he prays for a guy and, and the guy sorta has partial vision. Then Jesus prays for him again, Mark 8, 25, it says, then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored and he could see everything clearly. Now God wants to give us clarity of vision this morning, but we need to allow Him to do that. We need to allow Him to touch our lives. Now, this guy could have said, well, I've got partial vision now, Jesus. I can sort of see a little bit clearly. Guy, people look like trees, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get on with my life. Uh, and he would have lived his life just seeing people like trees, but he allowed Jesus to continue the healing in his life. And if we continue to walk with Jesus, have our heart wide open and live in surrender with Him as our Lord, He's gonna do this. He is gonna restore God vision to our lives. We'll be able to see clearly. We will be able to live true life with Him. And as we build our life according to God's plans, we will experience true life. We're obviously still gonna have ups and downs, but we will know that we're in the heart and the will of God and we'll be experiencing true life. So I'm gonna pray for that in a second. And secondly, the Lordship of Jesus. I love the disciple Thomas because, you know, he struggled, he had doubts. And then when Jesus had risen again, he has this encounter with Jesus. He touches Jesus and then he falls down at Jesus' feet and says, Jesus, my Lord and my God. And we don't see Thomas saying that before that. So he was even a disciple. He'd hung out with Jesus a lot. But in that moment, I do think he just surrendered totally wholeheartedly to God. So first of all, he was saying, Jesus, you're not just a God or another God. He said, Jesus, you are my God. And then he said, you are my Lord. He relinquished complete ownership of his life to Jesus. And I think that that is really, we need to have the heart of Thomas. You know, we have our ups and downs, we have our struggles, but coming to that place where we say, Jesus, you are my God, you are my Lord. I give the Lordship of my life over to you. So um, with that in mind, I'm gonna be praying for those two things specifically, for restored vision. If you've lost your vision this morning, um, I'm believing that God's gonna do something powerful in your heart today as you follow Him afresh, as, as you turn aside to see Him, spend time with Him. And I'm gonna pray right now that if, if you know that Jesus isn't the Lord, maybe you've never given your life to Jesus or maybe you, you have, but you know right now that you're building your life according to your plans and not His. Uh, this is a time now to surrender. There is so much power. There is so much grace. There's so much joy when we give the Lordship of our life over to Him. So please pray with me. God, I wanna thank You that You came to set the captives free and You came to heal the eyes of the blind. Um, and that's, that's in a very literal way, but it's also in a spiritual way, God. Lord, I pray for every person that has lost their God vision this morning. In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you would restore spiritual sight, that you would restore um, God vision to people this morning. Lord, that as we follow you, we turn aside, that we won't just see our, 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 your vision for our life partially, but we will see it clearly in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for restored spiritual sight that the eyes of our heart will be truly opened today. In Jesus' name, and I pray, Father, for people right now, maybe they're struggling with this. Maybe they've realised they're, they're still really the Lord of their life. I pray right now that people would make that decision to make you the, the Lord, the God of their life. Now, whether you're in a lounge church or whether you're just you're watching this online um, or listening to this, just for the next 20 seconds or so, just silently. If that's you, just, just say in your heart, God, I surrender my life wholeheartedly to you again.
thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you've promised that you'll never, ever let us go, that our life and our future is secure in, in the palms of your hands. Teach us to trust you, God. You're a good Father. Amen. Um, please don't leave your lounge churches if, if you made that decision for the first time or you know that it's been a, a big thing in your life today. Please don't leave without telling someone. Please message us if you're watching this by yourself. We'd love to connect with you and encourage you in your journey with God. Um, we've got some cool news coming up um, over the next week. So please make sure if you haven't already, um, subscribe to our email. Um, I'm really excited about that, but I won't let the cat out of the bag until that email. Um, so some people say, well, you know, I didn't have never heard that uh, happen. Uh, where, where did you hear that from? It's important to describe, to subscribe to our mailing list, our, our newsletter, because you know a lot of cool stuff um, that we only release there, but that real cool news happening next week. Um, you guys have an incredible, incredible day. God bless you guys. Your love is in-